We're hoping that everything is good. And I think today was a wake up call. And I'm getting that mom guilt. I'm heading to my 36 week appointment today and I know they're gonna do some type of check, um, but I'm also, I don't wanna do a cervix check. So we're, we're gonna see what happens. six week checkup and I had to do this strip like group B testing thing and I was not expecting for it to go both ways if you know what I mean <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do so <sighs> really not looking forward to this in the next two minutes We just had a little lunch and they're actually gonna go ahead and do a BPP check. I'm not really sure. Basically, my fluid for something was low and it might be because I dehydrated myself. So they just wanna make sure that it's good. They said the check might take up to 30 minutes. And basically we're gonna do like a little full checkup on the baby at labor and delivery or something, I'm not sure. So we just had some lunch as instructed, had a bottle and a half of water. I'm gonna try to drink some more now. <laughs> But we're hoping that everything is good because I need this baby to hold on just a couple more weeks to mentally prepare. But I mean, if I don't have a choice, I don't have a choice and I better get ready. quite a bit now and not that i almost had a baby today but it was like a close possibility if my fluid didn't go up which well i'll be back let me backtrack so we went to the appointment and they were actually doing an ultrasound baby head was down like baby's in position she's getting it ready but when she was looking around a little further she realized that i don't know what type of fluid it was but the baby's fluids were low and she asked me if i had drank any water today if I've eaten anything and I said I drank one cup of water and oh man I had no breakfast which yeah I should have known better but also your girl was not rush because I'm always waking up like right before I have to go around that time it was lunchtime and she was like go downstairs to the hospital cafeteria drink some more water eat some food and then at one o'clock come back up here and we're gonna recheck the baby with the monitor and it's called bpp or something like that i'm gonna look it up basically they just have to monitor the baby for a minimum of 20 minutes within those first 20 minutes they're just looking at baby's heartbeat and baby did good with her heart fluctuations and stuff then after that they do a 30 minute or so ultrasound and they basically have like a point system my breath girl where 10 out of 10 points is you're good to go 8 out of 10 still good 6 okay 4 depends on how far along you are and that was kind of what she told us and the test included things like movement of the limbs like opening the closing the fingers and a few other things that I just don't remember but one that when I first got there we were asking her questions like okay what if what does this mean if the baby's fluids are low you know what's the situation here and she was like well depends on the doctor some might tell you to come back in 24 hours um but most likely you'll, the baby will come sooner rather than later and my husband and i were like <laughs> i'm at 36 weeks and one day today and i don't even have my hospital bag packed the car seat doesn't have the newborn inserts like we're behind we are behind and i think today was a wake-up call for my husband and I that we need to get our stuff together, finish our little projects that we need to do before baby gets here. If I would've had a baby between like today, tomorrow, the next day, I would've survived. That would've been fine, right? Like I'll build the best in it when I come back. <laughs> my husband would've had to go into the store to get a new car seat, like we'll live. But the fact that we're not prepared is, it hit us, you know? So that was that. At the end of the test, we ended up staying there for like an hour, 20 for the heartbeat, and like another 30 for the testing. 
And she said that we scored 10.4 out of 10. How was that possible? I don't know, but basically, baby was good. She was good to go. I just needed to get some lunch and water in my system. I need to definitely, definitely keep myself hydrated from now on. As excited as I am to meet this little bundle of joy, she can hold three more weeks, you know what I'm saying? So that was that. And then I also did mention that I've been having so much pelvic pain. I don't even think I've spoken about that here yet. My pelvic pain has been ridiculous. I will sit in certain positions and it will hurt. I will walk, get up, do anything, and it just hurts so bad. I don't know, part of me thinks it's because I didn't work out this pregnancy. I may have not done things correctly, but at the same time, I brought it up to the nurse and she said, this is not your first kid. So these pains are a lot more common in the second pregnancy and so on. There is that, she did give me a maternity belt. She asked me if I had one of these belts with my first and I said, no, I didn't have these pains the first time around. Um, so she did give me one of these and she taught me how to use it. We put it on while I was there, but I didn't feel relief at all. But she also did say it's not a magical thing. Like a lot of women stop wearing them because they don't feel anything. But the point of this is to not make the pelvic pain worse than what it is now at 38 weeks, 39 weeks. So it's kind of like to maintain the pain level instead of it getting worse. Woohoo, I'm out of breath. But that was definitely an eventful appointment today. Open my eyes that I need to hydrate, eat right, and just really prepare for this baby because oh my goodness. My mom and grandma just left a couple days ago and they, they honestly helped me so much. I was gonna make like a nesting video with getting the newborn clothes that we have downstairs, cleaning it up, organizing it, but my mom and grandma were sent and they did the woman's job, you know, like they helped the girl out. <laughs> I would have not gone through all that laundry, all that sorting, organizing by myself in time because it would have driven me nuts. Okay, this is the current state of my changing table. It has, it's a mess, but okay, we're, we're working on it this week. She's crazy, all right? We have my clothes hanging here. Okay, we're not looking at that. What we're looking at here is the organization. We have the newborn onesies, outfits. Whoa, what's going on here? Sleep stuff, outfits, all of these little, what's he called? You know, for the baba and stuff. These are just like bassinet covers and the sleep sacks. This is some stuff I have yet to organize, like the bottle warmer, and this is actually for like a colostrum collector when I start producing um, milk. We did also go into like the zero to three category because you know, the newborn stuff doesn't really last that long. So we have long sleeves, short sleeve bottoms. Like I'm telling you, this was organized to a way, to an extent that I would not have been able to do myself honestly with a toddler. And there's more I'm about to show you. And then currently in my daughter's room, we also have even more clothes. I have these that I have to shift to my room once I organize the changing table. Again, long sleeves, onesies. These are bibs when she starts actually eating like at six months. And then I don't know why my camera is acting weird, but there we have six to nine months kind of shoved away because we won't be using that for a long while but it's there so we basically have a newborn to nine months figured out sorted washed folded and i don't have to worry about that which was such a huge stress this is um my humongous little belly my little baby girl and here we have the stroller i did wash the covers but we don't have newborn inserts I actually ordered some from the Chico website, but what actually came in were these huge inserts. I think they were like for a toddler. And something I hate about huge companies is that I hate when a big company doesn't pay for returns or they overall just make it a hassle because in order to return that item, I had to call to get a return authorization code. After that, I have to go to the you know USPS or whatever. And then they don't even pay for the return fee. Like you have to pay for the weight of the item, the box, everything. I just feel like I understand if it's a small local company, 100%, right? But a big company like that, like, come on, you can spare the 12 bucks. I basically bought those inserts for like 40, 30, 40 bucks, and I spent 12 bucks to return it. So I'm a little salty about that. At least I'm getting basically 15, 20 bucks in return to repurchase the newborn inserts. 
Something I also didn't really expect is how tired I am. And I know that like fatigue was gonna hit me, but not to this extent. Like if I do one activity in the day, I'm done. I went to Target yesterday and UPS to return the item and I was, by 12, I was done. I didn't wanna go out anywhere. I wanted to just sit and read. <laughs> And that's the hard part, just having to nest and prepare for the baby while also having a toddler who obviously wants to play. And I'm getting that mom guilt of, why, why am I gonna cry? <laughs> the mom guilt is starting to hit me a little bit of, you know, this can be our very last week as we know it, or last day or last lunch date together as like a family of three. And obviously it's a happy thing to welcome this new baby into the world, into the family. But to know that my attention won't be only for my daughter anymore, it's gonna be split into two and it's not gonna be 50-50 in the beginning because it's gonna, it's gonna, what's it called? Ebb and flow be between the two newborn stage might not need so much attention versus later on and so you think you guys know how it works <sighs> i took my daughter to target a couple days ago because that's the only store around here so we go quite often and we had a little starbucks date she was eating her little cake pop i had my coffee she had her water and we we're sitting at the little table and i was just thinking i love this i love her and I know she's gonna be a great big sister, but I really hope she doesn't see me differently or hate me for those first few months of having another child that's gonna be there 100% of the time, like the child's not going anywhere. <sighs> mom and dads are so different, I swear. I told my husband yesterday like, oh, I'm starting to feel like this mom guilt and I started to like get watery eyed because I just find it so sad in that way that she won't be having my like, full attention. And he was like, oh, why? <laughs> he doesn't understand why my feelings are so strong about it, I guess. But I think that's just the way men and women are wired differently in that way. We have all those really, really strong attachments. Plus, I'm pregnant, so let's be honest, hormones. And you get the idea. I feel like I'm just babbling at this point. Mm -hmm.